Hi everybody, it's Franny. And this is Heidi. And this is Heidi and Franny's Garage. And today is the review of our 1995 Porsche 993 Cabriolet. Well, the 993 is a very, very special car. It's the last of the air-cooled cars. But for me, that wasn't really a huge selling point. We have other air-cooled cars. Uh, but it wasn't until I got in the car and we drove it a little bit and I was blown away by how well it handled, how nice the ride was, how comfortable it was. Yeah. Yeah. We, neither one of us had ever driven or even ridden in a 993 before. Right. So we were both really amazed at how wonderful of a ride this car is. Right, the ride is, is just, it's just sublime in this thing. And that owes, I think, a bit to its rear end. So the rear end suspension on this car is the same suspension you'd find in a 996 and much different than you'd find in a 3.2 Carrera. So it's a multi-link, five-piece multi-link rear end suspension. And it manages its, its toe in and camber as it goes around corners really, really well. And is just really planted. So it's, it's just got a totally different ride. The engine is the uh, same 3.6 liter that was in the 964, except with some tweaks. Now, we also got a bit more horsepower. 964 was a uh, 245-ish horsepower. This is an early 993, so it's 270. This is before the Vario Ram uh, intake system. The crankshaft assembly has been lightened. So the crankshaft didn't actually get lightened, but the connecting rods and pistons were lightened and the valve train was lightened. So the engine spools up a little bit faster. It's a little more responsive. Had an upgraded Motronic uh, fuel injection system on it as well. So it's very, very smooth. It just sounds great back there. It's really uh, lightweight, feels very nimble, just wonderful. Right, and, and so drive, the, and, and it it's corners funny. really well, you know? <laughs> it's funny, Heidi says that it's, it's it feels lightweight. It does feel lightweight. It actually weighs a little bit more than a 996, which is funny. Well, our turbo is, is our turbo lighter? I think our turbo is yeah, lighter than this car. Lighter. And that's, every time I drive this, I feel like this car, I, I just feel like it's lightweight and nice. And yes. yep. I yep. don't know, I think that might have something to do with the fact that I do drive our turbo a lot, which is all-wheel drive. Now this car is, you know, just rear-wheel drive, so yeah, which, it, it handles which differently. Great. Yeah. Um, another cool thing about the car is it has a dual exhaust system in the back, straight from Porsche. That was kind of new and really kind of cool. Uh, since I mentioned this is an early car, so ours is a 95, it's actually really a 94. Mm -hmm. Porsche revinned a series of 94 993s for sale in the U.S. market, and yeah. it actually has, under the bonnet, it has an option code for it, which is kind of cool. So that makes this car an OBD1 car and not an OBD2. And the reason that matters is the uh, OBD2 cars have a check engine light. So one thing I wanted to get to uh, a little bit later, but there are some issues with the cars, with the 993s in general. So there were a lot of changes to this car. It obviously has a very different look up front. The headlights are more sloped than they were. The 964 still looks a lot like a G-body car, like a 3.2 Carrera does. Um, great look, it's just this is much different. Um, it also has the fender wells are kind of funny. They're, they're a little rolled. They have big round uh, edges all the way around them, which is kind of a neat design thing. If you look at this car, I think it sort of takes on a lot of the styling cues of the 959, which that would make sense that Porsche would make use of that. It has an automatic wing in the back, which goes up and goes down, very different than the 3.2 Carreras with their fixed wings. Now, I don't know a lot, I'll just say up front, I don't know a lot about the 964s, so I think they also had that same um, automatic wing in the back. 
another interesting thing about this engine is that it has twin ignition. So it actually has two distributors and 12 spark plugs. The 12 spark plug just cracks me up. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a thing. If you want to replace spark plugs on this, there's some uh, up and then there's a full set of six of them up and a full set of six of them down. Right. And the distributors, the two distributors, they're belt driven. They're the slave distributors belt driven off the, uh, the, the one that actually is driven off the engine. That belt in there needs to be looked at if you're looking at one of these cars. The, if that belt goes bad, you'd almost never know that the other distributor wasn't working. And it is a slight possibility that you could have that that uh, other distributor stop in a bad place and it could burn up one of the cylinders. Uh, another cool thing about it is it has hydraulic valve lifters. That's awesome. So the 32 Carreras, in order to adjust the valves, you have to uh, pull the heads off on each side and you have to go not the heads, the valve covers off of each side. And you have to go in and adjust each one of the valves manually and they're down in these wells and it's kind of a big pain in the butt. This car has hydraulic valves, so you never have to adjust them, it's super awesome. That part's really great. The fan on the back on the engine, the cooling fan that's back there, still air cooled, has uh, curved blades on it. And the reason they did that was to lower the whooshy noise of the fan a bit. Porsche was up against noise regulations, um, uh, and then also against uh, pollution regulations yeah, that the they had to deal with. standards. Emission standards. Yep. So curving the blades on the fan was one way to kind of quiet it down a little bit. But it's kind of neat. The engine still has its dry sump that uh, the 32 Carreras had. So that means that there's a separate oil tank for it and there's an oil filter in the oil tank. Now they move the oil tank in front of the right rear wheel. But an interesting thing that they did was they also added an additional oil filter underneath the car in the actual engine itself. So that's kind of weird. So now in order to do an oil change, which we're going to put out a video on that, you have to replace two oil filters. One of the things that I saw was kind of a complaint on these cars, and it's sort of something that people noticed when they were new, and I've noticed it too, is that the clutch engage is really, really late. And it's kind of a weird feeling, you kind of let out, let out, nothing, 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 and you're like, well, I'm gonna run out of clutch here in a second, and then boom, it engages, and then you're off the clutch. So it's it's just a different feel, I think, than like the 3-2 Carreras and such. Yeah, that's true. What do you think, Heidi? Well, how does it affect well, your driving? I, when I, we first got this car, I was moving cars around and, and, um, do you remember that? Yeah. When I went back and I, and it just like rolled back because I wasn't ready yeah. for it to not engage. So the, the dash on the car is sort of standard 911 fare. They really didn't change things much at all from the, you know, the earlier cars all the way through like the 3-2 Carreras. The 996 is very different compared to this car. So they, they've got the tack in the front, the speedometer on the right, then you've got your information, oil pressure gauges and such on the left. There's a Porsche up there. Yep. <laughs> and uh, you've got a clock on the far right and your gas on the far left. That's kind of standard Porsche fare. One interesting thing they did add on this car is a centralized kind of information center. So if something does go wrong with the car, like you leave the parking brake up, or uh, we currently actually have some problems with the sensors on the top, it'll throw a little bit of little air, but you'll get a red exclamation point. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's yeah. just, it's on the dash, but it's also... It's also, there's a button for it button. down here in the center console. Mm -hmm. Now the reason they did that, that, that goes to back to their racing. Uh, time in their racing days in that when you're you're racing really really fast you don't have time to check across a zillion gauges and all this stuff all the time you got to have your hands on the on the steering wheel you got to be looking at the uh, road most of the time so a single exclamation point red exclamation point lets you know at least something is going on and gives you a single point to look to see if there's any failures in the car so this car carries that kind of uh, system which is kind of neat when we bought the car, we were looking for a car that was very original. And this car is, from stem to stern, it's still very original. It still has its original uh, cassette deck mm -hmm. in it. Right. And uh, nothing else has really been changed on the car. It has the original top, even has the original windshield on the car. Right. Yes. So uh, we were 
we really, really wanted that. I didn't want a car that had been overly modified and had a bunch of extra parts on it. It still carries its US ride height. So I think we will probably eventually drop the car down on the ROW or rest of, rest of world springs and get it a little bit lower so it's not quite so dangly up as high as it needed to be for the US bumper laws. Another nice thing about this car, as you can see back here, this is a wind deflector that you can push up and down. These things are great. And the cool thing about this wind deflector is when the top is up, it actually tucks up into the top of the uh, roof of the top. So you don't have to fuss with putting it on and off, which is great. Yes, that we bought that though. It's It was not standard with this car. Not on this car. It was an option you could get on the car and mm -hmm. we just went ahead and ordered one. It was, in fact, they're still in production. It's crazy, it's a, it's a current part number. Right, yeah, it was pretty sweet that we were able to get that. Yeah. Uh, the ventilation system on the car is, is vastly updated from a 3.2 Carrera. And like I said, I don't know about the 964s, they probably have the same sort of thing. But you've got a, sin a single place to go for all of your air con. You've got heat and uh, you've got a temperature control on the right. And you've got up and down controls to, to for the flow up or down. And your air conditioner controls and fan speeds are in there as well. So that's pretty nice. Now these things do have a little fan in the back of them. They circulate air through it all the time so that they know what the temperature is and what's kind of going on with it. And that fan can get a bad bearing in it. And if it does, it'll start to squeal or, or sort of wobble a little bit. It's very easy to take out and fix and, and re-grease that bearing. But if you if you turn on your, if you get in the car and you hear this sort of weird noise from the aircon system, that's probably what it is. Other than that, it has a beautiful transmission. The transmission was updated somewhat. Oh, it, it's a six-speed transmission, whereas they were always five-speed up to this point. So this has a true six-speed. Uh, it's a G50. It's for the, the uh, continuation of the G50 model transmission. But it's a nice six-speed, which is kind of cool. I really like that. Uh, you've got power steering. You've got power brakes, of course and uh, cruise control and all those wonderful little comforts in the car. Yep. It's pretty fast. I wouldn't say this car is blindingly fast. You'd almost kind of expect it to maybe be a little bit faster, but the speed in this car is deceiving, I think. Oh, I think this car goes pretty darn fast. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've had this car for about two and a half years now, and Franny has a couple of items for those of you who are in the used car market of things that you should look out for. Right, so you can tell if you're looking to buy one of these cars and you can see the, the people always do the exterior pictures. The gap in the front of the car from the front bumper to the, the bonnet there is very difficult to get right if you've taken that front bumper off of the car. You really have to fuss with it to get it right. So you can always tell if a body shop, the car's been sort of pranged up front, that gap won't be even. So on this car especially, if you're looking at this one of these cars, make sure you look to make sure that the gaps on the front and the back are uh, really good, that they're factory gaps. They're completely the same all the way around, very consistent. There are some problems with uh, seals in the front windshield where water will collect in the bottom corners and cause some rusting. That's common in the 3.2 Carreras as well. And since this is very similar to a 3.2 in a lot of ways, that's also an issue on this car. On the, what's that? There's a couple of, re or there's at least one recall. Oh, right, 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 yes, thank you. Uh, so there was a recall on this car. The engine wiring harness in the back, the wiring, I think it was just really mostly the sheets for the wiring would get too hard and they would crack. And then when you, uh, the, they'd start to short out, you get all these kind of screwy sensor errors and all sorts of issues where something had gone wrong with the car. Turns out that it was just a bad wiring harness. Yeah, but make sure that if you are looking at the car that it's got done, and I know that's yep. true for the 95s, but yes. I don't know if it's all of them or if it's just I, You know, it's a really good question. I don't know either, but I know for the earlier cars, the 95s, it was definitely a thing. 
Uh, so something to very much look for. We just looked in their service history, which we had going all the way back to we the, uh, the beginning we of the car. We were very lucky. Yeah, we're really lucky with this. Right. We have tons of service history. Well, so we had the was. one shop where they had there was yeah. two owners, right. and they both had gone to the same shop yeah. the entire time. So we had the service history of both owners, which was phenomenal. Worked we, out great. We're really for us. lucky that way. So we could see right on there that the wiring harness has been replaced. Also, the top is a bit of a fuss with these things. Like I said, we have some sensors that are out on the top. And when the top is up and latched, it still says it doesn't think it's quite latched. That's very common. Uh, the motors and the cables and such, that this is, has an automatic top or an electric top on it. They can get out of sorts and be a real problem on these cars as well. So definitely have the top well checked out. We mentioned before the difference between the OBD1 and OBD2 cars. So this is an OBD1 car and in 96, when they went to the Vario Ram, they went to an OBD2. And what that means, and that's the onboard diagnostic system, the OBD2's got a check engine light. And that can be an issue if you're going to get your car through emissions. Oh, you can't have that light on and, and pass emissions. So what will, the, the most common problem is that there's these little holes in cylinder heads that they inject air into in like the first 10 seconds or something, just to get some air into the cats so that uh, it'll reduce emissions right at start. But there's a little pump that blows air into it. And if, it's thought that that pump's maybe not quite strong enough and the holes will build up carbon in them. And if they get closed enough, the engine management system will detect that there's an issue and, and turn on the check engine light. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to get those holes cleaned. You pretty much have to take the cylinder heads off the engine and clean them and kind of do a valve job and all that sort of thing. So it's a not a it's not like it's going to hurt the engine or anything, but it can really be annoying in the later cars. So it's something to look at. Make sure if you're going to buy one of these cars that that service has been done and that they're, or that the check engine light is not on. We have our friend, uh, Dave, who has a, a C4 and his check engine light is on. So he's gonna have to deal with that for emissions. Adam did too. Some of you might know Adam of Adam's Polishes. Yes, he had that same 97. Problem. Yeah, it's a 94, and that's a C4S, I believe, right, this car. Right. The early cars that this first year, there were no S's, so there were just the Carreras and the C4s. But uh, so I kind of like our car. It's it's a little lower in horsepower. The difference between the 95 and the 96 cars is 270 horsepower versus 284, I think, with the Vario Ram system, which is kind of nice. And the Vario Ram system works quite well. It's very nice. It's these little sliders that go up and down in the air intakes that just sort of change the resonance and allow and allow for more torque and a little better horsepower, a little better drivability and lower RPMs. But I honestly easily trade that for the OBD uh, one slash two issue problem you think. So um, I didn't feel a, a whole lot of difference in the way the car. Um, handled for when I drove Adams. Oh right, so you drove so Adams. Yeah. I drove it yeah. and um, it, it felt different and I think that was mainly yeah. because it was an all-wheel drive car but um, as far as power goes and speed goes I didn't, Not so and much. this was an yeah. S too, right? This was an S, yeah. So. so another sort of curious thing about the car is that the right side view mirror is about six inches back from the one that's on the left side of the car. And they do that, of course, just for visibility, but it's kind of neat. If you look at the car from the top, you'll see it sort of back a little bit. I always thought that was kind of a neat thing. Well, so in conclusion, this is an amazing car. It really is. And I thought, you know, last of the air cold, meh, 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 whatever. But no, it's really a fabulous car for a lot of other reasons. It's, it's very reliable, it's very usable, very comfortable, it's quick, it's fast, it handles beautifully. It's a true driver's car. Oh, it is a comfortable car, yeah. though. I'm very comfortable right yeah. now. Yeah, it's a great car. So I hope you enjoyed this review of our, it's a 95 Porsche 993 Carrera Cabriolet. 
If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and just leave them down below. Yes, and share the video because we are really trying to get 3,000 subscribers right now, and that would be really helpful if you would share. Yeah, it'd be awesome. So thank you so, so much for watching, and until next time, safe travels. Bye.